first thing we're going to do is take these big rib bones out. Now just get a sharp knife and just follow the bones all the way down. You'll be able to feel them with the back of your knife. Just like that. Next thing you're going to want to do is take this big chunk of fat off. So all up here, you can see it all the way across. So a good way is just to follow this line with your knife. You'll see it on both sides. Just get the majority off and we'll go in and trim it up a little bit nicer. But you can see, no one wants to eat that. We're going to clean this up, use some of this meat for the gravy. Next we're going to take this big fat cap off and see it going all the way around here. So just take your time, trim it off. Pull it up again with a nice sharp knife and just slowly cut it. What we're trying to do is expose the meat to get all the nice flavors of our rub on there because really no one wants to eat a big piece of fat. They always push it off to the side on the plate or you give it to the dog after. So just take your time, go around and get her nice and cleaned up. Now to start on the other side, take this big chunk of fat off too, and again slowly just take your time. Now just take a smaller knife and start cleaning up some of the other pieces of fat left on. Got the prime rib all nice and trimmed. All the silver skin and fat is taken off. Now what we're going to do is give it a good coating of kosher salt. What it's going to do is actually make a dry brine on the meat. The salt's going to be sucked into the meat to retain the juices when you're cooking, but don't load it on. You don't want to make a big thick crust. So just go around, pat it in. Got a good coating of kosher salt on the prime rib. Now what we're going to do, take a food saver bag, throw her in, seal it up, and let it sit in the fridge for at least 24 hours. Take your bones and your trimmings for your gravy, just wrap them in cellophane too, throw them back in the fridge. Looking good. All that salt is going to melt and go into the meat. Prime rib has been in the fridge for around 24 hours with that coating of salt. Now what we're going to do is make an oil based paste to put on to build up a nice crust. What we're going to be using is fresh rosemary, thyme, some of our cold smoked garlic, salt, rainbow peppercorns, cayenne pepper, and half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Now 
Now you can use anything you want at this point. Just try and stay away from sugars. And give it a little dash of some heat. Now, just chop it up until you get a nice consistency. All mixed up, take a peek. Smells great. Now, let's get that prime rib out. Just took the prime rib out of the fridge after giving that good coating of salt and letting it sit for 24 hours. Let's take a peek. Now you can see the salt has disappeared. It's going to add moisture when you're cooking it. Now next thing we're going to do is get some butcher's twine and tie it up so it makes a circle. Now what we're going to do is take some butcher's twine and tie it up. What we're trying to do is make it as round as you can for an even cooking surface on the rotisserie. Best way to describe it would be you ever see the corners on the end of a lasagna, how they always burn? Well, that's why we took the ribs and everything off. So, we got a nice round circle spinning around on the rotisserie. It's going to make a nice even cook. I go down about every inch or so and just tie it up. We'll come in and clean up the excess string. Got the roast all tied up so it's nice and round. Check it out. It's going to cook great on the rotisserie. Nice, even cooking. So, now what we're going to do, take our paste that we made and just brush on a light coat. Got a good coating of our oil mixture on the roast. Save the little bit of extra for when you get it on the grill, we'll give it another coat. Prime ribs got a good coating. Now, throw it back in a food saver bag or a Ziploc bag or anything you have. Seal it up. Put it in the fridge like this. Got the roast all sealed up in that food saver bag with our delicious mix on the outside. We're going to put it back in the fridge for another 8 hours or so and then Get it on the grill. About an hour before we put the prime rib on, we're going to put our drip pan on for our gravy or our jus sauce. What we did was add the trimmings that we cut off, one onion, and a few cloves of garlic. When we get it on the grill, we're going to fill it up with some water. To add a little smoke flavor, what we're going to be using is Barbecuer's Delight cast iron smoker pot filled with hickory pellets. Just got the prime rib on the rotisserie. What we're going to be using to measure the temperature on the barbecue is a Maverick Ready Check. Going to keep it in between 200 and 225. Take the extra paste you made and give it a good coating so it makes a nice crust on the outside. Move your drift pan off to the side and just brush it on. It smells so good. The way we're cooking this is called a reverse sear. So low and slow, 200 to 225 till it hits an internal temperature of 115 degrees. Then we're going to crank up the heat and get a nice crust on the outside. Prime rib has been cooking for around an hour now. Maverick Ready Check says we're sitting right at 225 for the grill temperature. Let's take a peek and flip the potatoes. Looking good. You can see a little bit of smoke coming out of the smoker's delight cast iron pot. Give the potatoes a quick flip. Prime rib's looking great. Check your temperatures with a probe. This is a thermopen. It's one of the best out there. So the middle of the roast is sitting at 107. I hope you can see that. So, time to sear it. First thing, get the potatoes off. And set your beef ribs aside too. We're gonna get these back on. Next, take a pot and a strainer, take out the big pieces of meat in your drip pan.
Then just dump the rest of the juices through the strainer. Put the drip pan back under your roast. And crank up the barbecue. To sear the meat, turn the barbecue to high. We got all the grills fired up and this back burner going. It's going to give a nice crust on the outside. Just shut the lid and keep your eye on it. It's starting to get a little bit dark out here, but the internal temp has hit 123 degrees. Now, time to take it off and wrap it in some tin foil. Prime rib just off the grill and looking great. Now just take a piece of tin foil and loosely tent it. Let that sit for a few minutes. Prime rib's been sitting for around 10 minutes. Take a peek, check the temp. One thirty-eight, perfect, medium rare. Let's get it carved. Cut all the string off first. Now the moment of truth. Cut it right down the middle, see how she looks. Ooh. Check that out. Perfectly medium rare. Just falling apart. Wow. If someone wants their prime rib cooked a little more, just slice it up and throw it on the grill for a minute or two on each side. The beef ribs are all done and looking great after cooking low and slow for 7 hours. 